a very warm welcome to the Niels van Roy Design channel and to another design analysis video. Today we discuss the Fiat Panda, a true driving design icon. The request that Fiat made to the independent Italian design studio Ital Design in the 1970s was as clear as it was ambitious. A car had to be designed that could be just as successful as the Topolino, the 500 and the 600. That the Panda born from that briefing would become the most iconic Fiat ever, even Giugiaro wouldn't have dreamt of. The Mark I Panda was built for 23 years. Fiat's first need was to replace the 126. At the same time, the attitude of the car had to become more European compared to that predecessor. Giorgetto Gigiaro designed a pure, but not simple, car, intended for a young audience. Many clever finds ensured that the Panda, internally also known as Tipo 141, became affordable, spacious, recognizable and practical. This project was a design masterclass by Gigiaro about simplicity and very smart packaging. The technical layout of the Panda is truly brilliant. From the outside we see perfect proportions and hard geometric lines, typical of the 80s. They give the Panda a utilitarian look. A high cabin ensures that people no longer sit low into the car, but vertically, so upright. This creates a lot more space than usual on a small platform. And even tall people now have plenty of space for their legs. Plastic shield bumpers were mounted on the front and the rear, which were not only convenient for urban use, but also easy to mold in manufacturing and quick to assembling during production. The bottom half of the body of the early pandas was then painted in the same grey as the plastic color of the bumpers. This makes the city car both tough and functional, as it is a cost-effective way to protect the bottom half of the doors against dings and scratches. Plastic was used on all corners of the car. This ensured the sheet metal could be made cheap, flat and straight. The plastic turn signals at the front and the light units at the back ensured the transition between the different sides of the vehicle, front to side, side to back, without complex and costly compound curved metal body parts were needed. The unique offset grille with the cooling slots mounted on the left or on the right depending on the motorization makes a unique statement in the world of automotive design, which mainly strives for symmetry. Completely flat windows all around, at a time where curved windows were applied to cars for many years already, proves Giugiaro's tendency in striving for simplicity in the Panda design. In addition, the side windows on the left and those on the right are interchangeable because they're flat, so that half of the tooling cost could be saved. Inside, the Panda offers a new use of space through the unique packaging. In addition, the interior offered a large amount of innovative ideas, for example, the design of the front seats, it was very minimalistic. In fact, the seats were no more than a metal frame with a hammock in between. The rear seat could be folded or removed within 15 seconds. The seating element itself could be raised. The first brochures of the Panda actually proudly stated that the V-shape that was created by folding up the bottom of the seat and leaving the backrest in place not only made it possible to safely transport vases, but even babies. The dashboard is suspended from the so-called crossbeam in all production cars. This crossbar provides rigidity to the entire unit and forms the physical basis of the dashboard. Normally that crossbar is completely hidden from view, whilst in the Panda it's not only clearly visible, but also beautifully used. By hanging fabric from the crossbar, one of the widest storage spaces in the car industry was created. This concept is ideal in a small family car, and also cheap to build. The textiles on the seat covers, door panels and the dashboard could not only be easily removed, but even washed. 
Then a fast forward to the third generation Panda and a tribute to the Squircle. The Squircle, the square and the circle combined was according to Fiat the evolution of the square. The Squircle is the Panda 3 design team. I think it's a very nice analogy and an illustration of what design means for the brand. A square looks hard, but it's practical. A circle looks soft, but it's impractical. The squircle is robust, but approachable. An ideal team for the design of a city car. All the car's graphics, the wheels, the windows, the bumpers, door handles, grille, headlights and even the body's proportions are consistent with this design team. The geometric lines of the Giugiaro Panda have become more voluminous in this iteration and the cabin even higher. The somewhat utilitarian but less pretty second generation Panda finds a nice update in this current version. The sides have more volume whilst front, side and back are beautifully sculpted together in a very three-dimensional way. The shape palette of the third Panda has become very consistent and of much higher quality compared to the second generation. While the charm of the second car and the essence and friendliness of the original have not been sacrificed. The interior of the third generation Panda is equally systematically designed compared to the exterior. The squircle can be seen everywhere. On the door handles, the lever, the controls, the instrument panel, the pattern on the seats and even the seat height adjustment. Fortunately, it does not stop at mere stylistic joy, because the practical usability of the interior is also great. Derived from the interior-wide storage compartment in the 1980s Panda, the Generation 3 also has a large open storage space. And then, if you spend a little longer in the current Panda, you will notice the small details, such as the grain on the plastic panels. Manufacturers often imitate leather-like structures for this. Fortunately, Fiat did it much more honest and way more interesting. The word Panda has been written hundreds of times on that dashboard. It is clear that the design team had a lot of fun. Despite the fact that Fiat is struggling with its design strategy for larger cars, the Panda shows that the Italians are still very strong in developing relevant compact city cars. Complimenti!